Lowry, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. It's really nice to be here. What does the future of work look like post-pandemic, or at least this pandemic? <laughs> okay, post this pandemic. So obviously the, the biggest change is around 50% of employees will continue to work remotely. Um, at least part of the time. And actually about 10% are expected to be completely virtual, um, meaning full-time out of the office. So uh, it means that we have to adjust uh, both at home and, uh, and enterprises have to adjust how they work. From the home worker perspective, how do they have to adjust? What needs to evolve in the home place before we talk about the workplace? Well, there are a lot of things. So it depends on your home environment, right? But obviously the most important thing is to have really secure, reliable, and resilient, meaning you probably have two forms of good broadband to your home. So that could mean that you have both uh, fiber and uh, mobile connection. It can mean a number of things. Uh, that becomes important because things happen. And um, I'll give you a, a good story. Uh, one of the people that I work with uh, early in the pandemic she was on a uh, Teams call with a very intimidating and important executive explaining a chart to him. Um, and uh, he started, uh, she, she was explaining and he kept asking her over and over again about the chart and she kept explaining and then he started screaming at her. Well, what had happened is her son had started playing Fortnite. All the kids were home, it was a bank holiday. Uh, and the Teams connection had died, but she didn't know it. So thankfully a colleague texted her and let her know. But this kind of thing happens all the time. And so managing your, um, your family connections and being able to slice your own home right, becomes a really important capability. Uh, I, think that, I think we've all made a lot of adjustments uh, in how we work. Um, and adjusted our homes to some degree, but I think we need more help with that. And I think the other thing that's really important is we can't forget, it's really easy sitting here in Barcelona with um, all kinds of folks who have very good and easy lives and lots of good bandwidth, to forget about all the folks who don't have bandwidth um, and who can't work from home very easily. So uh, it's the other thing that's really important is getting, um, I always say it's about getting affordable bandwidth to those who need it and those who uh, can use it that becomes super important, I think, for us now. So 5G helps bridge that digital divide. Absolutely. 5G is a critical enabler for this as well, as is fiber, right? Both. Um, and and the, as we'll always remind you, there's no 5G without fiber. They go hand in hand. Uh, and we're seeing a huge booming demand for both at the moment for that very reason. The Fortnite story sort of reminds me that we now have to think about SLAs for the home as well as for the enterprise. Exactly. And if you get a chance, I, I know we're at the show and right now, we have a fantastic slicing demonstration, slicing right down onto the Android phone. Um, and this is a really important opportunity for operators um, and for enterprises because it's a way to start managing uh, their end users. And you can't forget security, right? Because the other thing that's really important, both for the, um, for the home user, so we think about the super home, we have this notion of the super home. Uh, what is a super home gonna have? It's gonna have resilient, for high performance uh, bandwidth capability and it's got to be secure and it's got to be securable by also whoever you are working for. So from the enterprise side, if security should be step number one in the evolution of the work from home hybrid work environment, what else must enterprise evolve to to be able to accommodate that? So enterprises also have to sort of, I mean, there's a whole lot of uh, just human factors you have to readjust. So you have to think about your people's home environments. You have to think about the mix of office and home. Um, you can't just go shutting down offices because there are people who need to be there. Uh, and at the same time, you have an opportunity to really change your carbon footprint, to change um, the way people interact. So you need to give them really good tools. It's important that people have excellent tools. We had. Um, we had a, within um, Nokia, we had a WebEx as our platform at the beginning of the pandemic, and I have to say it crashed constantly. So we switched to Teams, which, uh, but, but and, and that's, you know, WebEx got their act together, but it's all about also your vendors having the right capacity where they are. So getting that, that ecosystem of tools and processes together is really important. And then doing um, support for people, so training, uh, so that they can leverage the tools in the best way. So we have an ongoing, uh, persistent. We actually have a really funny IT guy who does um, a webcast pretty regularly and it's a great way. We've turned it from you know sort of PowerPoint training or something boring into this absolutely hysterical IT guy who gives you tips and tricks on a regular basis 
Um, and then we do a lot of security training through, we use a thing called Hawks Hunt, for example. But I, but I think it's really important to um, enable your workforce as much as possible, both with training, with training that's engaging, with tools that they can use to communicate more effectively. Um, it was amazing to me, overnight we became a company that used Teams well, from uh, not using it at all. So powerful tools are out there. Um, and uh, and we need to leverage them. And but but it doesn't. None of it works if you don't have connectivity. <laughs> it's the most basic thing. And the sliceable, programmable connectivity is what we see going forward. So in the future, more and more, think about sliceable, programmable, network as code connectivity. Hillary, thank you so much for joining us on the back deck of the Nokia booth. It's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, Michael. Mobile World Congress continues here in Barcelona. I'm Michael Hainsworth.